Welcome to the uh, first sample exercise for the basic uh, technique series of the uh, 1, 2, 3D design videos. Um, in this video, we're going to make uh, this little, basically like a, like a children's toy, uh, kind of like one of those little uh, pegboard and mallet things where you take the shapes and you, and you stick them through the right hole. And um, What I found that this exercise does, because I do it in my live classes, is that it really uh, teaches all of the different uh, tools that we have used so far. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and just start making this thing and talk as I go along with it uh, and, and see how fast we can get it done. Now to start with these boxes, I'm going to or start with the sides, I'm going to put down a couple of primitive boxes. Um, I start with one like this and um, I'm going to just mimic what I have here instead of trying to get you know the precise measurements. I'm going to just hit it with a smart scale and see what we can do with this. Yeah, We can make it a little bit thinner and then we can make it taller by stretching it out up here and of course we can drag this out over here uh, so we get something like the basic shape that we had kind of already um, and since it's just the same exact thing on the other side I'm just gonna copy and paste and drag one out over here and uh, to make the plank that's also another really easy one to smart scale we just make the board flatter and stretch it out like this. We can take a look at it over here, see how wide it is. And there we are. I'm going to leave that alone and turn my view. So uh, at this point I'm just going to snap these together. Grab this face, snap it onto that, and uh, just highlight the fact that especially when you don't have them grouped, which I don't, uh, but even if I had, you can't just snap this onto here because you're just going to keep snapping back and forth. You got to snap this face onto that one. All right. Um, at this point, I'm pretty much just ready to merge them. I'm not going to play around and, and keep them floating around like that. So I'm going to go to my combine and start merging these together. Hit enter. And I'm ready to start making some holes in this thing. Now this involves a lot of subtracting, but we're going to use a couple of different techniques. We're going to start with a cylinder. Um, and my smart scale, I remember, is control B. I'm going to start using that shortcut to save myself a little time. Make that taller so that it goes through. And subtract out of there. The next shape I use to illustrate the intersect tool uh, by basically taking a cylinder and a box overlapping them, selecting them both, smart scaling them up so they're tall enough. And now I could have just sketched this uh, semicircle over here, um, but again in the live class I try to demonstrate all of the tools through the, uh, through the examples. Uh, so sometimes I use something that's maybe not as efficient as, as it could be, just for the sake of showing off a different tool. So let's subtract that out of here. The next step illustrates extruding a sketch. So all we do for this one is create a polygon over here. I'm going to give it five sides and make it a little smaller. There we go. And remember to extrude, you can either go to the construct menu up here and hit extrude, or you can just click the sketch and hit the gear menu that shows up like that and extrude it up instead. And that's real simple. Poke that through right here and subtract. In the next one we want to do something similar, uh, but I like to illustrate the, uh, the quick subtract method of extruding right through a shape like this. We take, the, uh, we take uh, another polygon, this time give it uh, three sides. There we are. And we can take that and whoa move this on top of it if we look at it from the top see where it is there we go and all we got to do here is extrude that sketch right through and we skip ourselves the subtraction step getting dangerously close to that corner but like i said this is going to be a perfect mimic of uh, of what we did over here you can take a little more time with your model if you want. Next step 
This one illustrates extruding a custom sketch or a polyline, getting away from those primitives. And all I'm going to do is draw myself a little trapezoid-ish thing. Get all the geometry teachers mad at me. All right, we'll extrude this one out. And are we getting too big here? No, we're all right. Subtract that one through. And I'm going to do the same thing, only with a spline instead. You know, just kind of exercising all these different muscles, making sure we're comfortable with all of the different tools. You know, including scaling when, when things get a little bit too big. And you can scale these sketches down before you extrude them. Here we are. Oh, I'm moving the wrong thing there. Let's move this one through. Get myself a better view. Sometimes it's better to just use the view cube to look at it straight down, and sometimes, if your perspective is still warping too much, you want to use orthographic view. There we go. And there you can subtract that shape out of there. After that, we're going to do sketches again, only drawing it right on the surface here. And notice that I have to click that surface before I even begin to draw. And I'm not even going to extrude and subtract. I'm just going to bring it straight through and bring that hole down. And the last step is to draw a combo sketch where I do polyline for two sides of it, then select the existing sketch so that I know I'm editing this one, and draw a spline right through here and do the same technique extrude down so now we've got it looking pretty similar all that's left to do is select these uh, little edges which I'm doing by clicking moving my mouse away moving back and clicking this edge shift clicking this one shift clicking this one and this one and then using the fillet tool Give myself a little bit of roundness there. And uh, remove my extra sketch. Give it a nice color there. Like I said, not a perfect duplicate, but all the techniques are the exact same if you just take your time with it. And then lastly, there's the mallet. And the mallet's a little interesting uh, because we're going to use that align tool. Uh, that they just added in in the new software. So all I do with this one, kind of just eyeballing it here, I'm going to put down a cylinder, rotate it. Here we are. Smart scale. Now, I don't think they have, let me see. Yeah, smart scale doesn't have a corner scale for that one, so I'm just going to go to my normal scale tool. And uh, and bring that out like this. Here we are. There we go. And then, of course, the handle is just a thin cylinder. By the way, when you're smart scaling, if you hold down shift, you're going to get into uniform scale mode. Uh, so that's a pretty neat tool there. You don't have to go into the full scale menu to do a, uh, a uniform scale. And it'll also keep the aspect ratio when you hold down shift. All right, let's try that. There we go. Make it thin. Bring it up. And to make sure I have these aligned, I'm going to use the align tool by selecting these two objects first, then using a line, and I just want to make sure that this handle is coming down the center of this, so I'm going to press this dot right here, and then bring that through. Let's see how that works. Perfect. Look at that. Perfectly aligned. I could have used Snap, uh, but Snap gets a little bit wonky on curved surfaces. Um, now at this point, I can pretty much just merge these together. There they are. And give myself a couple of fillets around the edges here. I'll grab that one, fillet it down, not too far. OK, 
got this one and fillet it down like that. And what I'm going to do with this end is I'm actually going to extrude a sketch outwards. Uh, so I'm going to use my project sketch tool to just uh, double click here. And when I extrude it, I can toggle this little dial here to bring it in like that. Or if I want to make it kind of have a, a wide head, I can actually extrude it outwards like this and give it more of like a, a pounding end. So let's do that. Oh, one of my fillets went away. Here, I'm, I'm getting a little wonky with the camera, so I'm just going to hit my home tool, get myself back to normal here. And fillet this down. Give myself a wooden texture. And there we go. That's how you make our first kind of warm-up exercise, the mallet and the pegboard. Thanks for watching, and uh, have fun with your 3D models.